Good morning. It's break time. How are you today? I always pray that at the moment that this video finds you, you may all be in good health, happy, and safe. Today is August 16, 2021, and our good news is coming from Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 22. And it says, A young man approached Jesus and said, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? He answered him, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He asked him, Which ones? And Jesus replied, You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All of these I have observed. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go, sell what you have, and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this statement, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Today is Monday of the 20th week in the ordinary time, and... Our good news today is keeping the commandments is a good thing to do, but following Jesus as his disciples is to perfectly fulfill all the commandments. We heard how a young man approached Jesus and questioned him, saying, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus replied, saying, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. And if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. Friends, from this very answer of Jesus, we will immediately understand that life in itself is all about relating to one, to the one who is good the one that is really good, the source of all that is good. And by keeping the commandments, this, that life can only become good, life can only become good in relationship with God, the source of all that is good. To relate to God is to live keeping the commandments. So we might ask ourselves, where are we at in terms of our relationship with God? Where am I now in my personal relationship with God? Because as what we gain from what Jesus said, life in itself is all about relating to the one who is good. Now, the young man, going back to the young man, full of confidence, further asked, which ones? As if he's trying to ask Jesus, then what are those? Tell me. Uh, somehow he firmly inquires the intricacies of the commandments because he have been, he has been, he has been faithful, faithfully keeping, keeping them even at his young age. Then Jesus carefully laid them all. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But we will immediately notice 
that what Jesus laid down are the commandments pertaining to our relationship with one another. He consciously omits the commandments that directly pertains to the lawgiver, that directly pertains to God. These are the commandments, I am the Lord your God, thou shall not have any gods before me. Thou shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember to keep, to keep holy the Sabbath day. We might ask, why did Jesus omit these commandments pertaining to God, directly to God? Why? Because as Jesus said in the beginning of his answer to the young man when he further asked, All of these I have observed. What do I still lack? Jesus wanted to give light to the truth that he indeed is the Son, is the Son that is sent by God the Father, that there is now, now a fresh and new way of relating with God, a new relationship with God. Before God is unseen, now God is seen and fully experienced in Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus is laying down, giving light to a new way and a fresh way of relating to God. He said, if you wish to be perfect, go and sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, come follow me. Friends, to relate directly with God is now to relate to Jesus. To relate directly to, with God is to lose one's self in the dynamics of God's love and be completely absorbed by grace. If we are going to look closely into the commandments 4 to 10, they all tell us about the actions that we have to do and not to do in relationship with our neighbors, right? With our fellow human beings as we, as who we are. With all our minds and strength. In short, we do not lose our unique identity when we relate with our neighbors. In fact, our identity is a necessary, is a necessary, requ necessary requirement when we deal with others. That is, our identity as a unique person, a servant of God. Oh, yes, he is Joseph. He's a good guy. He's a Christian. Yes, I know her. She is Mary, a Christian. See, we need our identity as a unique person in order to be able to relate with our fellow human beings, our neighbors. You are you, and in your uniqueness, you are able to relate with somebody else, with someone else, as yourself. But Jesus is, in implying the first, second, and third commandment, says, If you wish to be perfect, go sell what you have, and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Now the focus is shifted from the neighbor to treasures in heaven. Friends, if you sell everything, notice that if you sell everything and give all its worth to the poor, you will lose everything, including your own identity. Because what you have is who you are. What you have is who you are. Therefore, when you sell it and give all its worth to somebody else, you will lose your very self. You will have nothing. 
In short, Jesus is highlighting the truth that to relate directly to God is to lose everything, including our own selves, our own identity. This is perfection. You know, sometimes we feel good. It feels good. Every time we have done something good to our neighbor, right? In one way or another, each of us have experienced this, doing something voluntarily, right? Something good to the others. Feels good. It feels right. This feeling that we have, short, quick, and but precisely good, it entices us to do it again and again. Somehow, this experience of good identifies a gap, a sort of something lacking in our human life, human experience, that only the source of all that is good can fulfill God. Jesus invited the young man saying, Then come follow me. Once you have sold everything that you have and have given the proceeds, all the proceeds to the poor, then come, come follow me. A very personal invitation of coming to follow whom? Me, Jesus. Now that you have felt how good it is to be of service to one another, to the other, Jesus is now inviting us to come and follow him. This reminds me of a, 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 a unique, a special conversation Jesus had with a Samaritan woman by the well. In John chapter 4, verses 23 to 24, Jesus says, But the hour, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship Him. God is a spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Friends, when we come to follow Jesus as His disciples, we come and follow Him in spirit and in truth. That is, with faith in the truth that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God the Father, sent into this world incarnate as Lord and Savior. The visible God with us. Also, that with hope and love, we really have to relate to God as an unobedient children in the filial spirit. The spirit of the spirit of sons and daughters. As sons and daughters, just as how Jesus has shown us how Jesus have lived an obedient son even unto death. The truth that Jesus is God, the Son of God, and in spirit, in the, in the filial spirit, as sons and daughters of God, as an obedient son like Jesus did. Friends, Jesus' invitation to come and follow him is an open invitation for all of us, for each and every one of us. It's open for all. Whatever our situation in life may be, Jesus wants us to align, align our lives into His life, His very life, as an obedient son of the Father. Why? Because 
It is only in Jesus Christ that our perfection lies. He said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. As human beings, we are not perfect. And we cannot be perfect on our own. That's the goodness of Jesus. In Jesus Christ, our perfection can become. We can be perfect in Jesus, in Jesus, and with Jesus. For only with Jesus that we can truly live the life as children of God, the Father. So let us rejoice and be glad. We are all children of God the Father in Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Peace.